So when I was a child,、uh, my father showed me a picture of the Earth taken from the space. So at that moment, I found, wow, it's so impressive, beautiful, and extraordinarily peaceful. That was my first spark, and made me always fascinated about space. And this is also what approxim- a good approximation what we do in Earth observation. So from this video, you see that we have the Earth. And we are taking measurements with the satellite. So the satellite is orbiting the Earth. Earth is rotating in such a manner we are able to make the measurements of the Earth's surface on a global scale, also to any specific geolocation in very high resolution. And now we are living in a golden era of Earth observation. This is the situation of five years ago, and this is the situation of today and in the future. So you see. We have a lot of uh, uh, space infrastructure already there, and we have a guaranteed data access till 2030. And in ESA, it's already discussed the plan for 2040. And here I want to mention several of the missions. Terrasa X, Tan X is the German X-band radar mission. I will come back to this again. Tan L, in name of several Helmholtz centers, this is our future radar mission. And These are the Sentinel satellites from the ESA, so this is really the game changer because they have the open and free data policy. Every day, 15 terabytes of data become available to everybody. Now, what we do with this type of data? I give one example. So you know, the Arctic sea ice is the very important climate variable. Uh, because if the sea ice melting, it will warm up the ocean, which will in turn influence the ocean currents, as you already from, heard from the last session. Yet, in order to give a reliable statement about、uh, sea ice, it's not enough that you have a measurement from the past several months. Instead, you need to trace back to the history with the satellite. In this case, it's 40 years. Only based on this type of observation, you can give a reliable statement. The sea ice is retreating to which extent, and you can therefore make prognosis. And now, why do we need data science and artificial intelligence in Earth observation? I introduced on the one hand the observing system, on the other hand the users. But it's easy to imagine for everybody here what the satellite measures is not exactly what the users would like to have. Therefore, we need data science algorithms as bridge in between to extract geo information out from this satellite data and deliver data research services to the users. And for this purpose, we have been developing a lot of processors, algorithms. This could be more physical model-based、uh, signal processing methods. Could also be、uh, data-driven analytics using machine learning and deep learning. We are working a lot with them. But today, I don't want to bother you with any technical detail. Instead, I show one data science story of my own research: is global urban mapping. So I guess it's clear to everybody of here, urbanization is the most important mega trend of global changes after climate change. And we are living in an urban planet. What you see here is the rural and the,、uh, urban population evolves over time. Actually, in 2008. There is a secret change of human history. There are more people living in cities than in the rural areas. And if you look at the predictions at 2050, so there are many more people. They are eventually all living in cities. And here is a geospatial distribution of urban growth. Dark blue means more established mega cities. Bright blues are the newly coming mega cities. So you can easily see that. Actually, urban growth happens mostly in developing areas, in Africa, in South America, and in Asia. And urbanization, if not controlled, then it will become informal settlements, and this can actually endanger the life of people who are living there. This is just a recent example in Mumbai,、uh, because uncontrolled urbanization, there are massive fires and floods happens in the slums. In order to turn these informal settlements to formal, the first thing we need to have is the map. Unfortunately, look at the example of Lagos, a city with 21 million population. We don't even have a 3D model of this city. And I guess 
what we have really on a global scale. Is the global urban footprint goof? What is it? Exactly what you see in this picture it is the black and white mask of urban and non-urban. So you can imagine this is far, far from what is sufficient. And together with my team, what we are trying to do is to exploit different types of satellite data, combine it with, even with social media data, and we want to, on a global scale, to get the 3D and the 4D, 4D is the temporal domain, of the building models. We want to get the functions of the buildings based on these two types of information. We also want to deliver a transparent population density estimation. The reason is that in slums, the population are extremely underestimated. So how do we do this? The method is the straightforward. We use radar satellite to get the 3D information, and the multi-hyperspectral sensors from the top, it can tell me the roof material. And complementary, we have the social media images taken from the ground level, tells me the information about building facades, even more, we can analyze the tweets sent from specific locations and we know what kind of activities are going on. So in this way, we're able to get the functions of the building. This is the idea. With a small difference, we don't do it for one building. We want to do for every building on the Earth. And for this task, we're actually dealing with uh, 10 petabytes of data. What you see here is a live video of the Data Archive Center in Oberpfaffenhofen. And this actually means we are dealing with half of the German data, uh, remote sensing data archive. Now, how do we get global 3D, 4D from radar satellites? So the first satellite I will talk about is the Terrasa X. This is the German expanded satellite, 11 years old, still healthy, still delivering the highest spatial resolution data. And this is how it looks like Berlin. So the radar image of Berlin. With this image, probably you cannot see much, even though for me it's really beautiful. And uh, because you don't have a 3D information. And uh, in particular, because it's looking to the side, basically you have all the buildings falling down to the ground. And what we do as a uh, technique is the so-called radar tomography, also called uh, X-ray of the Earth. Every 11 days, satellite goes to the same place in Berlin, take another image from slightly different position. With 30 of these images, taken probably in a period of a year, we're able to do a, a tomographic reconstruction, just like the CT of the Earth. And also because we are taking at a different times, we can see the changes in the fraction of the wavelengths. This is millimeter and a centimeter. And this is the reconstruction results of Berlin, and the color stands for the height, and now it's easy to see post plots, uh, Ice Tag and the Berlin Central Railway Station. We get one billion points uh, per kilometer square. And my favorite example is close to the Siegesäule. If you pay attention here, you see these regular rasters. These are actually the lamp posts along the roads. And don't forget about the fourth dimension. We are measuring the changes. Which type of change? You know that uh, temperature change from summer to winter? Building will also breathe. In the summer, it expands. In the winter, it shrinks. And this is what we see with the satellite. So what do you see here? Burning Central Railway Station, it's breeze in the scale of millimeter and centimeter, accelerate for thousand times for you to see it. And the main building is this kind of movement. If you look at the railway sections, it's horizontal movement. And we get this information for every point I showed you before. But this is done with uh, half meter resolution, tens of images. If we talk about global, we have to make a compromise. We have to switch to the Tandax X data, strip my mode. This means three meter instead of half meter, not 30 images, instead it's several. So we need really a data science approach to cope this. And from several Tandax X data, we can get the building heights through this X-ray of the Earth. And using planet data, for instance, is also globally available by, in this case, uh, um, generative adversary networks. We can generate the building shapes. If we combine these two information, today I have the pleasure to show you the first impression of the global 3D urban models. In four years, you can ex expect this type of information also in Africa. 
And the last part of uh, this work is using the social media data because many of you are tweeting and uh, sending images. You may wonder how we use this, right? So we have the <laughs> we have the uh, social media image uh, shared by the users, and what we do is uh, from satellite data we get the building shapes. And we build up a library that contains more than 10,000 of images with the label, this is commercial, residential, and etc. And we can throw this into a deep learning algorithm. And finally, we're able to get a prediction of the building functions. Here is in Chicago, Vancouver, and Munich. And my vision in four years is that we want to deliver a first and a unique, consistent uh, 3D and 4D spatial data on urban morphology. This means go to any city, also like Mumbai I showed before. You will go far beyond what you have today. It's a binary mask of urban and non-urban. You will know where are the slums. If you are interested in a particular slum, you can get the 3D information involved with time. You can get the transparent population density mapping. And we will make this data open accessible. And we hope this can at least help the authority um, to better plan, let's say, the infrastructures like clean water, healthcare, education, and etc. And you think this is all, but this is just a teaser. <laughs> Earth observation data fermented with uh, data science algorithms, we can make difference in many of these fields, like global changes, metrology, mobility, city planning, and etc. My final message is, is that in Europe, we're already in a leading position to generate data and share the data. We should keep up in data exploration. Give us 10L, give us the infrastructure. We make the miracles together. Thank you.